So here we are in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, one of the greatest art galleries in the world. And we're going to walk through this chronologically. We're going to start with the medieval Gothic paintings, and then we're going to go to early Renaissance. And what we're going to do, we're only going to see two or three at the moment, and then we're going to just uh, hopefully observe one of the most extraordinary changes in the history of art. So we're going to walk through here, and we get into this corridor. Uffizi, originally offices of the Medici Dukes. You can see how beautiful this corridor is. Um, they worked in a very nice environment. We're going to go through this first door, and in this first door, we're going to encounter our first paintings, and they are these Cimabue, Giotto, and, G and uh, Duccio on that wall there. And you'll notice just stopping here for a moment, we're not going to spend much time here. These are massive, they are enormous, twice the size of a man, and they were altar pieces. They went on an altar in a church. You came into the church, and this is what you would have seen, and pretty much all you would have seen, because uh, it's dark in there, and you'd have had candlelight all around the altar, picking out this gold, this is real gold, and the important thing is Mary. There's the Virgin Mary. Almost, you could say, more important than... Jesus. This is about 1300 and they were obsessed in Florence with the Virgin Mary. I suppose it's a bit like Mother Earth and um, she was the one they prayed to and you can see the angels less important so even though they're closer to us there's no perspective here they're smaller it's all to do with who you are. Um, expression on the faces but basically what you're looking at is an ideal stylized icon. This is not meant to be a real human being, this is a saint. Look at the gold, it's been worked beautifully, incredibly expensive. We're going to leave that, that was basically the status quo right throughout the 1300s until we go through this little passageway here, in here, and just turn around the corner and just on this wall we're going to see this painting here by Giottino. And um, that's great, actually, if you just keep it there. We're going to look at a slight angle. Maybe a little bit further. Can we just face it? Is that possible? I don't know. Okay. So what you've got here, just about see it. You've got what's called a pieta. It's a pity. It's Jesus, after his crucifixion, he's being taken out of the tomb. Uh, oh, sorry, I think, he, no, sorry, he's being laid in the tomb by Mary, his mother. Very sad moment. She's cradling his head. And this is Mary Magdalene. And this is one of the saints, probably St. Peter. And we've got another saint here. If you look further up, you've got more saints. Um, the three nails that pierced him. Um, and... This is probably James or John. It's a very poignant scene, and they've all got very expressive faces. But what's interesting about this painting, we're here, this is Giottino, which means little Giotto, actually, because uh, he was a, a disciple of Giotto. His real name was Stefano, Toma, Tommaso di Stefano. What he's done, this is about 1360, so 60 years into the 1300s, is he's put the donors, you can just see them here. Um, a nun, she's a widow, and her daughter. And they're very close to the scene. They're having a look at Jesus, and they're participating. They're very close physically in the painting. But in fact, the clothing of this girl here, you'd have to go right up to this painting to see this. It's intricately woven garments with ornaments and jewellery and the mother, the nun, a definite depiction of a real woman. These are 14th, 15th century women. This is the Tuscan, northern Italy costume that you'd have expected to see in the 14th century. So these people are looking at a scene that happened 1300 years before they lived. But they're present, this is the idea. And if you have a look, they're really involved. St. Remigius has got his hand on the girl's head. And St. Benedict has got his hand on the nun's head. 
And I just love this because although it's medieval, this is just about a decade, 12 years after the plague, wiped out half the population of the world. Florence took a hit, 70% of people died. Maybe her husband died in the plague. And you've got this intensity here. The survivors, if you like, it's a survivor's painting. And they've been praying in the church of St. Remigius, this would be on the altar. But when they pray, they're going to be looking at themselves, in, intricately involved in this, this scene. And this is the beginning of the change that's going to take place. We're going to get realism, and we call that basically the Renaissance. So let's just go around this corner, and back along here. And if you go right here, let's just have a look at this big painting firstly. This is Lorenzo Monaco. This is about 1412, so we moved on a bit. And what you've got is the Virgin Mary. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's perfect. You've got the Virgin Mary here, mother of Jesus, being crowned Queen of Heaven by her son, Jesus. If we just first look at these angels with their beautiful coloured wings. The thing about Lorenzo Monaco is that same gold, and in fact lapis lazuli, very, very expensive, more expensive than gold, this blue, is his use of colour. He's using gold. I mean, tons of gold, and that's real gold. But he's also using very bright colours. He's got slender figures. He's got the expressions on the faces. But again, no attempt to use perspective. That's not what we're about here. This is still early 15th century. But more confidence, because the plague has basically, its sixth revisitation, has not killed too many. They feel they've built up the resistance. They can get on with life. Just look at the ornaments here. The ornamentation is fantastic. The crown being put on her head. And if you go right to the top here, you'll see God right at the top of the pedestal. There he is. That's God surrounded by these red cherubim and these rather strange blue uh, seraphim guarding the throne of God. And then on the right here, you've got... Mary, and on the left you've got an angel, a beautiful announcing angel on this left hand one here. We look at the colours there. We think of Fra Angelico as doing those colours, but that's the 1440s. So this is very early. This is 40 years early. Now just have a look at the painting as a whole, and you've got some prominent saints in it. This wonderful curved band. It's almost like the Milky Way. That this is showing that we're in, moving into paradise. This is heaven. And you've got this sort of band of stars. And then on this right-hand side, you've got, um, this is St. Benedict. And on the left-hand side, you've, oh no, that's St. Benedict with the rule of St. Benedict. And this is St. Romwald, who established an order of monks wearing white robes. Benedict is usually in a black robe, but he's in a white one here because this is for the Camaldolese order. And this went in their church, the Camaldolese church, of St. Mary. And um, Lorenzo Monaco, who painted this, was a monk there. That was his main job, a monk. So they became incredibly skillful, these monks, at producing these fantastic altarpieces. 1412. Now, if we just turn to our left, and this will probably be the last one we do today, just coming close to this one here. This is Gentile de Fabriano. And this is 1423, and this is a game changer. This is the one that basically began to change everything. When he's painting this, 1423, we've already had experiments in perspective by Brunelleschi and his friend Donatello and their friend Masaccio. In three years' time, Masaccio is going to change art forever. We'll see that in another video. But this is 1423, Gentile de Fabriano just beginning to show these changes. This is the adoration of the Magi. So what you've got is the Magi. They're the three kings who came from the east, bearing their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So there's gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Someone will be holding it for him. There, he is. there it is. The old wise man taking his crown off. The, young, the middle wise man just taking his off. And the young wise man who's just having his spurs removed, actually, by a chap behind him. You can just see that here. There we are. Uh, with his red stockings. 
And what you've got here, Gentil de Fabriano did this painting for the Santa Trinita Church where the Strozzi family, the rich bankers, the Strozzi family had a chapel. And they asked him to do this painting of the wise men coming to give their gifts to Jesus. Maybe because Palla Strozzi, who's got himself in here, that's Palla Strozzi watching this scene, and there's his son. You can tell this is Palla Strozzi because he's holding a falcon. Falcon. In northern Italian dialect, Strozzieri was a falcon. So that represents him. I'm here, he said. And the reason they wanted this was, I think it's to do with the fact that these are rich people and they're giving gifts to Jesus. And maybe they were feeling that this is what they could do. But it's also a massive public statement. This, is, this, was, this cost 3,000 ducats. 3,000 ducats is, uh, you know, a ducat is about a week's wage for an artisan. So we're talking about, um, in modern money, this would cost you about something like 200,000, a quarter of a million pounds. I mean, and it's gold. It's layered with gold underneath. The gold comes through. It's actually embossed. Some of these, these trimmings and trappings actually come out of the painting when you're actually in front of it. You can see them protruding from the painting. They're incredible. But what's this comes out of the painting, this sword handle. It's quite extraordinary. It really involves you. Don't forget, this would have been lit by candlelight only, and it would have been glittering in the, uh, in the candlelight. But what he's done is he's used a tremendous amount of naturalism and realism. We've got these horses. Just look at this horse. I love the expressions on the horses' faces. This one here, who seems to be smiling, is just next to a horse who's got a crescent moon, represents a Strozzi family. So this is the guy who paid for it. He gets his emblem on the horse. If you just have a look further down, you'll see that this horse is a bit clumsy and he's about to hit this dog and this dog isn't very happy with that and he's looking back. This kind of realism is very, very new. And this painting packed full of flowers, it's packed full of animals. Let's just move across to see the Mary. Just behind Mary, you see these two maidservants. Firstly, just look at the elaborate dresses and the most fantastic shawl she's wearing, the detail of that. This is very unusual, the folds there. And you can see that what, Gab uh, uh, what Gentile de Fabriano is doing is using depth, he's using shade, he's using light and shade. Look at them rather rudely examining the gold that the oldest of the wise men has given them. And if you just have a look a bit further up, You'll see that the light for here, this is in slight darkness, that's a boring light, is coming from the star itself. And he's experimenting with the source of light. If you go back down to Jesus, you'll see that this is all lit up here. But that's spiritual light coming out of Jesus. And it's rather interesting how he's using light. So if you move across again to the right hand side, you can see that the white horse here has got a dark side and then the brighter side where the light of Jesus is shining on to him. All this is breaking new ground. Don't forget, you wouldn't have seen this painting just one off. Here you are, with Fixie Gallery. You'd have come in two, three times a day to this church to pray. There will always be something interesting to have a look at. And if you have a look at the very top, you've got the whole story of the wise men. Firstly, on the left, looking at the top of a mountain to see if they can see the star. And then, on their journey, they go first to the city of Jerusalem, set on the hill there. You can see that. A great entourage. It's like a huge embassy coming from the east with the three wise men. And lots of stories thrown in. There's a strange monkey here. You've got leopards on the back of horses. We're going to see all this later on with Gotzoli in San Marco, by the way. Uh, he copied this virtually almost as it is. And then here on the right hand side they go off to Bethlehem um, where they're going to come down the hill and that's what we see here, crowding at the bottom. They've all come from afar. Here, see these guys looking rather astonished. If you just have a look a little bit above them, you'll see this dove. They're all having a look. It's a kind of hunting scene and you expect the birds to be birds of prey hunting other birds. But this probably represents 
I think, possibly, the uh, Holy Ghost, always symbolised by a dove. And they're looking in astonishment at that animal face here. What is it, a lion or a tiger? Very interesting. All crowded. He's done this as if we're looking up a slope. So no use of perspective yet, but a lot of depth, a lot of realism. And this is ready for, in just a few years, Masaccio is going to paint his famous Holy Trinity, the first painting to use perspective, 1426. This is 1423. Right in the, the cusp of the Renaissance. It's about to break out of the medieval and go into the, a new world. Sad thing about this is that Palastrozzi, unfortunately, he's a very, very wealthy banker, as his painting shows, but so is Cosimo de' Medici, and the two are going to clash. It's bound to happen, and it does happen. And ten years later, Palastrozzi's the loser, and he gets exiled from Florence in 1433, and uh, never returns. He lives a long, long life. He lives till he's about 91 and um, never comes back to Florence. He's finally, when he's about 90, pardoned and his exile is over and he says, forget it. I've lived too long outside Florence. Um, but anyway, Gentile de Fabriano, Adoration of the Major. And we'll leave it there for the moment.